Hi YouTube, AC Dodd here. Welcome to part three of the fuel economy series. Uh, hopefully this will be the, the final part, but uh, let's see how we dig in. So what we're looking at this time is the fueling system. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, obviously the fuel pump, uh, regulator if fitted, and obviously the carburetor. So the carburetor I've got for uh, demonstration purposes is an HS6. Obviously the butterfly is missing because this is a part built one, which I'm uh, currently working through. But for the purposes of what we're talking about, I'll use it as a, a, a prop. Anyway, uh, so as we've been talking out uh, through the series on fuel economy, it's all about um, preventing waste. And the carburetor is no different. So one of the biggest problems you get with an SU carburetor is, uh, especially the HS uh, type carburetors, is the um, needle valve assembly is rated for a very low pressure. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, the, the factory rating on these valves that are in these uh, float chambers on the HS is the maximum pressure is 1.5 PSI. So if you're running over 1.5 PSI, what happens is they leak and let's fuel through. Uh, and obviously that does two things. One is we waste fuel. And secondly, the engine run, runs rich, uh, which is uh, obviously bad for the engine. Um, and you know uh, not good for its uh, long-term health so one of the most important things to fit on a car uh, is a fuel uh, pressure regulator so what that does is reduce the line pressure to feed into the carburetor to a point where the needle valve can control that pressure um, and therefore prevent leaks overfilling etc now one of the biggest areas that i find on these car on these uh, carburetors is uh, when you turn the engine off uh, and it's hot uh, pressure um, from the fuel pump um, keeps fuel pushing on the needle valve and actually if it's over the rated pressure of that valve the design spec uh, it will leak and it will overfill the float bowl and then flood into the engine until the line pressure drops now this usually manifests itself in uh, when you try to start it won't quite start first turn it has to crank over a few times and then and then it fires up and then perhaps the engine's not quite clean for the first couple of seconds as it clears its throat of the excess fuel and then uh, everything returns to normal. So uh, one of the um, interesting things about fitting a uh, fuel pressure regulator is uh, if the carburetor needle valve assembly is all working correctly with the right pressure applied to it, uh, you'll have perfect hot starts. You won't get any of that leaking when the engine stops. You'll turn the key and boom, it'll start straight away. Uh, and it's quite a pronounced difference. So a uh, fuel pressure regulator is excellent uh, and should be fitted on any application. So, and what I mean by that is if you've got a mechanical pump, fit one, because the mechanical pump, uh, even though it's rated, particularly for the uh, pressure of the SU, unfortunately, uh, it has peak pressures. Uh, and those peak pressures are higher than the seat is, mounted, uh, is rated for, and it will leak in use. Uh, and it will leak ever so slightly. It won't be a lot, but it will definitely leak and um, a noticeable improvement can be had by fitting uh, fuel pressure regulator to a mechanical pump. So I thoroughly recommend every installation uh, when it comes to uh, an HS carb or an HIF carb to fit a fuel pressure regulator, uh, whether you have an electronic pump or a mechanical pump to get the best fuel control. And obviously that's what we're interested in when it comes to economy, we don't want to waste any. So. Uh, a regulator is a must uh, if you're interested in getting the maximum fuel economy and not putting excess fuel for your engine. Now, if we move on to, uh, you know, driving and fueling, um, it goes again, it's exactly the same thing. When you're cruising along the road, you need to be using the minimum fuel uh, that you can to produce the power needed to go along the road. And what that basically looks like is... Um, effectively a fuel mix that can be ignited properly and you can burn it all in the cylinders. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because uh, every engine has a slightly different what we call misfire limit. Now the misfire limit is determined by cylinder pressure, um, ignition power etc. So on a typical car if you aim to get your fueling around stoichiometry and you have sufficient coil power you will get the most, uh, certainly get the most economy. Now, some people can run these a little bit leaner than that. Um, I don't necessarily advise that because purely because you have a carburetor. And what that means is different times of the year, you'll have different air temperatures, 
uh, different moisture requirements in or different moisture uh, amounts in the atmosphere and that will affect the um, tune of the carburetor because it's insensitive to those changes um, and it will uh, continue to to offer the fueling um, that it's been set at. Now the problem with that is um, you can end up with a situation where the fuel is diff you know uh, perhaps more difficult to ignite so your fueling uh, actually can change. And what I mean by that is sometimes if you set these very lean at certain times of the year when it's perhaps colder uh, and the air is more dense, um, you can run into a, a leaner fuel mix purely because the carburetor is trying to do what it can, um, but the air temperature has changed significantly and you can end up in a misfire situation. So my advice with the carburetor is to run the fueling around stoichiometry uh, and have a sufficient ignition power to ignite that mix all year round. Uh, then you will get the best economy. The problem with that is people think, we'll just turn the screw till we get stoichiometry and that's it. Unfortunately, that's nowhere near it because screw turning is not how you set the mixture on an SU carburetor. The screw on this carburetor and the screw on an HIF carburetor is merely there to set the mixture at idle. And what you want for an economy engine is an engine that idles cleanly uh, around stoichiometry, perhaps uh, on a lower power ignition system, maybe 0.95, something like that, on the lambda reading, where it idles nicely. In any case, if you follow this diagram, you will see on that diagram uh, that the fuel mixture, and that's an, uh, a proper SU diagram, uh, from the factory uh, the uh, idle mixture is basically set the nut is set as lean uh, as you can run the engine smoothly and that is typically the best uh, point because what that is actually showing you is the misfire limit of the engine so as you turn that down the engine starts to slow down and the reason for it is is because or it may run rough uh, is because there's insufficient fuel uh, for the ignition to fire off and, and make the engine run so that's effectively how you set the mixture there's no other point in moving that anywhere else. That's where it needs to be set. And then the uh, needle in the carburetor is profiled to give you the fueling curve that you need across the rev range, uh, such that it meets the demand. So let's, let's talk about the demand. Now, a lot of people get confused with uh, fueling, right? Because they think, oh, it has to be rich to stop things, um, you know, melting a piston and all the rest of it. Right, I just need to clear this up. The only time you need a sufficiently rich mixture to avoid, uh, to keep things cool and to avoid detonation and things like that is under full power conditions, okay? Now, in a road car, that's probably only 2% of driving, 3% of driving maybe for the average person. So that's the only time you put full power fueling into an engine, okay? And perhaps... You richen the mixture up on progression as you're going from part throttle up to full throttle to make the engine pick up nicely. The good thing about the SU carb is, and a lot of other carburetors, is these are demand sensitive items. So the beauty about that is when calibrated correctly, uh, you can have a full power rich mixture when your foot's hard on the accelerator. And then when you want to cruise, you can lift your foot up to the just crack the throttle cruise position. And this can be calibrated to reduce the mixture down to just above the misfire limit uh, for lean running and very efficient running. So in reality, uh, the SU carburetor is excellent at road work because it is able to be demand sensitive and it can um, effectively put in the correct amount of fuel irrespective of your driving conditions. So whatever engine speed and whatever throttle opening, if this is calibrated correctly, it will fuel as it's been set. And this is where people uh, get the wrong idea when they're doing the fueling because they, they go for full power fueling all the time. And say on a Lambda a scale, they'll be, they'll be in the 0.8s when they're cruising and they'll be in the 0.8s at the full power. The problem with that is that excess fuel going through the engine costs you money. Um, and not only does it cost you money, it actually costs you money in extra fuel. So let's just, let's just understand the cost of uh, motoring, okay? So... I quite often come to see people's engines where they've spent, say, let's say, for example, £10,000 having an engine built and it's been professionally installed and for whatever reason, uh, 
the car's been left uh, running rich for the running in. The car does a thousand miles and then at the end of that thousand miles after it's been running, it's smoking heavily, it's using lots of oil and effectively the engine hasn't bedded in. And what's happened typically is somebody's left the mixture uh, too rich, it's bore washed the engine and your 10,000 pound engine in a thousand miles and now is, is effectively needs a rebuild uh, to, to, to fix this issue has just cost you uh, basically uh, 10 pounds a mile okay now if you think what you're used to and you're you know you're 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 driving your car and you think 25 30 pence a mile is expensive for fuel try 10 pounds a mile okay for the cost of a new engine in only a thousand miles this is the problem with not controlling your fueling so let's go the other way around let's say we build our engine 10,000 pounds let's say uh, it's a you know it's a 1275 engine with about 80 horsepower so so just a road car nothing special and you drive it hard and the carburetor has been set perfectly and the carburetor has been set all perfectly through running in and obviously perfectly through the life of the engine Let's assume, because you drive it hard, it lasts 50,000 miles before it needs rebuild. Now, that same 10,000-pound engine has only cost you 20 pence a mile, okay? That's the real cost of having your fueling set properly, okay? Nothing to do with the cost per mile of fuel, right? Clearly, the one that's tuned properly and running efficiently will use a lot less fuel, so it'll save you there as well. But my point is, the real expense comes in wasting a good engine by not having the fueling corrected. So, moving on, uh, getting back to our carburetors. Uh, a lot of people set these up so they're too rich when they're cruising. Uh, yeah, the engine will perform well, but as I say, it wears quickly. So, uh, engine wear, piston ring and ball wear are directly proportional to the amount of fuel that's going in an engine. So, you only put the uh, minimum fueling into an engine to guarantee maximum life. And I'm talking about road cars here. Race cars, 10 hours running and the thing's rebuilt anyway. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's got the right fuel in to be safe and produces maximum performance for the racing application. That's what it's all about. But I'm not talking about racing. I'm talking about road. And that is a completely different requirement for carburation and longevity. In a road application, a car's got to go many thousands of miles and to reduce the ball wear um, and to get the economy where we need it, we need to reduce the fuel going through that engine. Now, if you look at the situation where Lambda 1 means there's a perfect air uh, to fuel ratio, if you go richer than Lambda 1, you have excess fuel. And that excess fuel is what adds to engine wear. Okay, so anything below Lambda 1, so Lambda 0.95, for example, there's a little bit of extra fuel that adds wear to the engine. Very small. But as that gets richer, so 0.9 or 0.85, the wear increases massively. So when you're at 0.85, the wear goes up a lot. And if you go down to 0.8, then it's way up on the uh, graph and very quick wear. So all I'm saying is you need to maximise to maximise the life of your engine to get the maximum bang for buck out of it. Your carburetor fueling needs to be perfect and it needs to be under control. Now, the other problem we get with uh, SU carbs is they wear, right? And a lot of carbs were built many years ago, 30, 40, 50 years, and they are well past their best. And trust me, when these things wear, they hose fuel through your engine uh, like it's going out of fashion. So one of the most important things, we talked about a regulator, is to have a properly rebuilt carburetor that is properly calibrated for the application. One of the other things people get wrong with the SU when they're trying to set these up to run properly, especially for economy running, is the damper. So the damper is responsible for uh, fuel enrichment during acceleration, but um, that's only simple terms. In real terms, it's not just acceleration, it's every time you move the throttle. So if you set the damper uh, to have uh, a richening effect uh, during acceleration, um, unfortunately, the, due to the way that the damper is designed, you get the same rigging effect just as you touch the throttle. So just imagine driving through a town and you're on and off the throttle all the time. If you've calibrated the carb to give you maximum power on acceleration, say 0.85 lambda, then every time you touch that throttle pedal, just move it, you'll get 
uh, a brief amount of that full power rich mixture. So one of the things you need to understand is uh, setting your damper for maximum uh, fueling uh, for acceleration will have an effect on your fuel economy, especially round town driving where you're on and off the throttle or any particular driving where you're constantly moving the throttle pedal. So the most important thing there is you should select the damper uh, specification and oil to give you the enrichment you need to stay um, from going over lambda one, so from going lean, but to stay in, uh, around the, you know, sort of the 0.9, uh, maybe 0.95 area if economy is your thing, all right? Because that will give you a lovely clean running plug and that will minimise the fuel every time you press the accelerator. I've, I've added this little bit on dampers into this video because it does make a huge difference and it's specific to the SU carburetor. So, in order to get the best fuel economy, in summary, we need to control the fuel that's going through the engine and we only put enough fuel... Uh, through that engine to maintain a good burn, okay? So that means uh, around stoichiometry or around the misfire limit and just pot potentially a tiny bit richer so that you can account for uh, different days um, to uh, make sure that you don't run into misfire limits when you're, you know, when you're using the car all year round. Um, it, the beautiful thing about an SU carburetor, it is a performance with economy device. So it is in it is uh, within the realms of this carburetor to do 60 miles to the gallon and also produce 100 horsepower at the same time, okay? That is absolutely possible, but it's only possible if everything is right and, as I said in part one, if the car's driven properly. Anyway, hopefully that helps you understand uh, fuel economy and uh, obviously the requirements of the carburetor uh, in the engine. So, as ever... Uh, please like, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.